Ariel Hawani in New York City for the UFC World Tour press event alongside UFC President Dana White. And Dana, this is a great idea. You started in Las Vegas, you were in LA yesterday, New York today, many more places afterwards. Where did it come from? It seems like something that we see in boxing, not so much UFC. Well, what happened was we've never had an end of the year that was this stacked. And I've always had this philosophy where, you know, people always want to watch a great fight, but you got to know that a great fight is on. You know, boxing usually has the, you know, the luxury of knowing eight, nine months, you know, to, to, to let everybody know what the fight is. Well, since we had these fights already made, they're all great fights, the, the, the most kick-ass fights at the end of a year we've ever had. We said, let's do this world tour, let everybody know they're happening, and then start promoting them one by one. Have you noticed that the women, Ronda and Misha, are generating more headlines, more buzz than the other fighters. And you could say those are bigger names, those are bigger fights, but those two, there's a lot of heat there. Have you noticed that? No, I didn't notice that, but uh, you know, there is. That, anytime you get the fights where there's, you know, it's like the other day, Ellen Berger and, and Rory McDonald were talked about more than the main event and things like that. You know, people get into the fights that, uh, when the people hate each other. But you did say last week that those fights where there's heat often don't deliver. Right. Are you afraid this one won't deliver? No, I mean, their last fight was awesome, so I, I would expect the next fight to be great, too. Um, but you have to admit, a lot of the fights where there's a lot of shit talk, they don't turn out too well. Ronda flipped her the bird yesterday. Yeah. Did you see that? What do you think of that? Uh, get used to it. You're going to see a lot more of it. Ronda told me a couple days ago that when Misha came on the set for the first time for The Ultimate Fighter, her initial reaction was that she was being replaced. She was yeah. upset. She thought, she, why would the champion be replaced? That makes no sense to me. I have no idea, you know. Um, she expressed that to you. Yeah, yeah. At first, I thought she was just flipping out because Misha was there, and she what she thought was that I was kicking her off the show and replacing her with. Why? Misha. How would that make any sense? Well, it She's would. The biggest star. She's the champion. It would make sense because there's a lot more backstory to it. That's why it would make sense. Can you tell us the backstory? <laughs> it's very bizarre. It's not worth it. You just paused. That, that yeah, was an not, unbelievable pause. Yeah, it's, it's Come not on. worth it. It's just Give us a little bit of it. You know, she has a Hollywood agent mm. who called me up. And, uh, no, not a Hollywood agent. She has a Hollywood lawyer mm. who called me up the Sunday before we started filming. And we got into it. Yeah. Is it a money thing? It's just... It's a fucking ignorant thing is what it is. Yeah, it, was, it was one of the most ignorant fucking moves in the history of really? ignorant moves, yeah. What do you do? And I flipped out, and I lost my fucking mind. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. There you go. You got it. That's all you're getting out of me. That's it? That's it. We're done the interview? No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, let's move on from that fight. George St. Pierre, he told me, okay, he kind of dodged the Rory bullet for now. He dodged the Anderson bullet, but he has a super fight in mind. He's not done with the super fights. Do you have any idea what he's what, talking about? What does it mean he dodged the Rory bullet? Well, it seems like if Rory would have knocked out Jake Ellenberger, people would be screaming. Be climbing. That right now they're not, right? Right. But he has something in mind. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? I don't. I honestly don't. Maybe you can ask him afterwards. Sure. Uh, he told me that he thought the Rory fight was brilliant. He actually agreed with me, if you recall. A tactical fight. He loved it. What do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, I, you're the only two. Okay, you guys are the only two. Must those, be a Montreal thing. If those are the kind of fights you want to see and that you would pay money for and, you know, you just said yourself, nobody's screaming for the Rory fight because the fight sucked. Do you have any idea what, what, what you'll do with Rory now? Um, no. Thinking about doing Rory Robbie Lawler. Bring the fight to him, another striker, or something exciting. This go. year? I don't know. We'll see. John Jones has obviously hinted uh, going up. He wants to break that record first, the, the Tito Ortiz record. So he's fighting Alexander Gustafsson. Do you think this could be his last fight at light heavyweight? I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly haven't talked to him about it. So I don't know. Whatever he wants to do, I'd be cool with. Would you grant you know, him and Cormier are going back and forth on this tour? He's saying things in the press. Would you grant Cormier the opportunity to fight at 205 because he doesn't want to fight his friend Cain Velasquez if he beats Roy Nelson? Again, we'll see. We'll see how everything plays out. It's, it's tough to talk about stuff like that now. It depends on, you know, how this whole thing goes down. Were you happy with the Fox 8 ratings on Saturday? A lot of people are saying the sky is falling. Yeah. I've been hearing that shit for 10 years. I was pumped. Pumped. We're number one on, 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 on all of television. 
you know, in, in the demo, uh, 18 to 34, 18 to 49, all, all the demos that matter. And it was the same number we pulled last summer. So wh why would I not be upset? Not to mention the fact that, uh, why, would I not be, why would I be upset? The, the numbers were great. And the other thing is, first of all, it's summer. Hut lowers or lo levels are lower. People don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You want to talk about the sky is falling? 57,000 males 18 to 34. The fucking sky just fucking crushed you, okay? The sky fell and splattered you all over the fucking ground. That's a disaster. You're Frank to Bellator, of course. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, all the money, time, and energy right now is being focused on Fox Sports 1. It wasn't focused on the Fox fight. It, the Fox fight killed it. You mentioned yesterday, Vitor Belfort doesn't want to fight Tim Kennedy. Let him fight Rashad. Of course, you're referring to the fact that they're teammates. That's not going to happen, right? I'm not referring to the fact that they're teammates. I'm saying he wants to fight somebody else at 205, then he can fight Rashad. He told me yesterday he wants to fight Chael Sonnen. His Chael wife did. Chael Sonnen's fighting Shogun. After that fight. You Vitor, man. Are you annoyed? He, he thinks you're upset at him. I am upset at him. I am. He, yeah, he's on my nerves. Yeah. Why? Whatever. Whatever. Is the Kennedy fight dead? Because Kennedy you guys tweeted. Want to see the Chael Sonnen fight? I, guess I think it's a more interesting fight than the Kennedy fight, yes. Yeah. More interesting fight than the Kennedy fight. Well, let's see. Kennedy's won all his fights. Chael Sonnen has lost his last two fights. But there's a lot of heat there. They've been going back and forth for so a long time. You want to see a fight based on heat, not on guys who have won. And so Tim Kennedy shouldn't get the opportunity to try to beat Vitor Belfort because there's more heat with Chael Sonnen. There's a long-standing history there, and Tim Kennedy is not even in the top ten, and you could say that Vitor is the number one contender after Anderson. Right. But Vitor Belfort's in a very weird position because he got annihilated by, Vitor, by Anderson Silva in, like, you know, a minute of the first round. And then, um, you know, Anderson's pretty booked up right now. Right. So he either wants to stay busy or he can sit out and wait. So Tim tweeted, the fight's done. He, it's not going to happen. He thanked you for the opportunity, but it's off. Is that true? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not dealing with Vitor Belfort. Lorenzo is. One last thing, it came out today that a fighter that you signed recently who is uh, going to debut later this year might have some ties to neo-Nazi-ism. Uh, uh, did you know about this, and is he still on the roster, uh, You know, German fighter? It, it's, it's one of the many cool things that I love about social media. You know, I heard about it instantly through social media, and uh, obviously we're, we're looking into it now. He put out a statement saying that he has never been associated. Yes, he was a... It was a soccer hooligan. I don't even know what the fuck that His means. nickname is the hooligan. Right. I don't know exactly what that means. But obviously, you know, the guy's undefeated, and we are going to look into it. And if there, he any way, shape, or form is involved in, you know, racist groups, neo-Nazi groups, or anything negative like that, he'll be cut. Okay. But I don't want to jump the sure. gun because some people are tweeting stuff and jump the gun and, and, and ruin this guy's, you know, this guy's life um, if it's not true. So we're going to look into it. I literally have a whole team of lawyers and everything else looking at it right now in, uh, in Vegas. And if it's true, yeah. Okay, last one. On Monday, you told me to find Paul Daly. I found him, had him on my show, spoke to him. He was very apologetic, said he would lo love nothing more than to come back. He is sorry. He wants to come back. He has a team working on his visa issues, all that stuff. Are you open to this at all, or is it no, you know, kind of a non-story at this point? I honestly haven't even thought about it. Would you be open to it? I'm not even thinking about it right now. Is there a chance? I have no idea. Okay. Thank you very much, right. Dana. We appreciate it. All right, buddy.